record that in there, and there goes the. Can you put in the description and already tag did. him in the description for me, uh, Dave? I already did. Cool. Everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. If you want to get your money's worth, stay right here because you're listening to knockouts and three counts. And remember, everybody's got a price. The million dollar man. This is going West through our intro. Knock out to three counts. It's the podcast, baby. Make sure that's the one you check out because, buddy, like me, they're the real deal, baby. This is Jake the Snake Roberts. Just let you know, you need to listen to the knockouts and three counts for you to see that damn snake again. That's pretty new. Oh, okay. no, no, you're good. No, you're good, man. It's just the, the <laughs> intro to the show is going. That's all. Uh, I didn't know if you put me on hold or not. I was about to say, that call my doctor's office? Not at all. <laughs> What up, though, everybody? This is Kyle, and you are watching Knockouts and Three Counts. And as we told you, we have a very special guest tonight. We have Michigan's own Jamal Hill. How you doing, brother man? Let us know. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and all that good stuff. All right out the gate. That's what we're going to do right out the gate. You already uh, know, man. I mean, you can find me. My, uh, my Twitter handle is Jamal H. Uh, my... Then well, you can just type my name in in the, uh, in the Instagram and you can look up, look, catch me on there as sweet underscore dreams at J Hill uh, underscore J Hill. Yeah, man, you just catch me on either on pretty much the big social media platforms. Pretty active. So first things first, man, congratulations on your uh, awesome performance to UFC Apex. So first of all, tell me a little bit about that, man. You, uh, you know, that's obviously different circumstances than anybody's really used to fighting in. Um, let me know a little bit about your thoughts on that whole experience in the fight as whole. Well. It's just business as usual, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, for me, oh, shit. For me, you know what I mean? It was just, yeah, it was business as usual. usual. Whenever I get in the cage and stuff, I don't, I don't not, I don't really hear anything. Like, you know what I mean? I'm locked in. I hear my coaches. I hear the instructions and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, as far as the crowd, I mean, I, obviously I can feel the energy and I can hear the emotion whenever the crowd is there. But it's just, you know, I'm just – I was just locked in. Did it change, like uh, – did that make, like, the week of it all any different for you with all the different stuff with the COVID testing and things of that, things yeah, of that nature? I mean, there's, many, there's more things that we had, more rules and stuff that we had to follow. That was it. That was about it for the most part. So, so you know, obviously you had an awesome performance. You finished the guy real quick. You know, are you looking to get back in the cage real quick with all the talk of uh, Fight Island and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I want, I'm looking for a quick turnaround, you know, uh, something pretty soon within, within the next five to six weeks, hopefully. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, they said they're going to keep me as busy as I want to be busy. I want to be busy. So we're going to see. So, is there anybody in particular you're looking for, or are you just trying to go up the line? I'm here for everybody, bro. Man, ain't nobody in particular I'm looking for, you know what I mean? Whenever I feel like I'm the best, and I'm here to be, and I'm here to dominate this weight class for a long time, bro. Who, what does it matter? It doesn't matter who the victim is at this I, time. All going to get their turn. Totally respect that. So, we were talking with a guy who happened to be in your corner for that fight, Brett Martin, right after you guys got back, man. Um do you feel like uh, do you feel like all these fights that they're running in succession with UFC being an MMA for that matter being one of the few sports that's running right now, if not the only one? You know, do you do you think that this is going to give more of an opportunity for guys like yourself, guys like a Chaos Williams, guys like Brett, or anybody else who, you know, is on that cusp or is you know young in the UFC to get more fights out? I don't do. Really, I don't understand the question, bro. Like, so, so you saying like this? Does like everything going on provide a better what? I mean, what I mean by my question is I should – I'm sorry, I should have clarified up. What I mean is for, like, the younger guys coming up, I feel like we haven't seen – you know, Nunez just fought. 
I feel like there's still some apprehension for some guys to fight. I said, I, what I mean is for guys like yourself, you know, you said you want to fight as many times as you can. Do you feel like this is going to present more opportunities since some guys are maybe a little bit on the fence about fighting? Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. Not only just that, you know what I'm saying? People are, uh, it's a lot of, most of the, most of the rosters, anybody, most of the overseas rosters is overseas. He can't even get into the country to, to be able to do a show. But, yeah, that leaves the door open an opportunity for a lot of people, myself included. So there was a lot – there were headlines last week. They were talking about John Jones saying that he wants to drop the title, things of that nature. What do you think that does for your division? You fighting at light heavyweight, I mean, you and think – it just opens up the title in the division. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, he's a big draw and everything like that, but that ain't my, that ain't my concern. That's the company's concern. You know for sure, I mean? for sure, man. It's not my job to keep the talent here. You know what I'm saying? My name, my job is just to show up and do, you know what I mean, take care of business. Display my own. Definitely respect that. So with you coming out of Grand Rapids, man, and now you're, you know, you're doing your thing here in the UFC, man. How do you feel, you know, coming out of, you know, Grand Rapids and it being, you know, maybe a gym that's not well known as much now? How do you feel that you know puts you against some of the other guys best in the world man because you're you're showing out against the best guys in the world right now what do you mean i don't, I don't fully understand that question what i what i'm saying is you know you coming from a smaller gym you know you see all these guys in extreme couture you know in Allegi uh, alliance mma all that stuff you know do you think that that kind of has people kind of like looking down on you on your way up and if so you know does it give you an extra fire I don't care. <laughs> That's funny to me. Like I watch, I watch all these. Like I see videos and predictions and stuff. People have no idea who I am or what I do or what my team does. I mean, so it's just all the same to me. It's just, it's just funny. I mean, because at the end of the day, when you in there with me, it's a fight. I'm a real motherfucker that you gonna have to fight. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, hey, definitely, that man. Shit, I, where you train I respect that. You train that don't mean nothing. I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a war. We're not. We're not going, all oh, y'all have more people at y'all gym and shit like that and, and anything like that. It's me versus you. You know what I mean? You, re you just represent your gym. I'm representing mine. You're going to see who represented the best. Not only mine, no man versus man. You know what I mean? You got your work somewhere. I got my work somewhere. Hey, I totally, I totally can respect that. So – with your coming up, you know, uh, for anybody in the Michigan game or anybody around town, you know, everybody knows that you came up through Lights Out and uh, fighting in the Lights Out Championship, stuff like that. Um, what are your I thoughts up, on the I Michigan? I came up on the, on the West Michigan scene, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, before. For sure. Like, I've been fighting. Like, people don't realize. People don't know. They don't realize. I've been fighting for 10 years, bro. I've been, I, started, I had my first – I had my, my first fight was – what, March 3rd, 2010? I mean, I've been doing this shit for over 10 years. So tell me a little bit about that. You know, you said, you you know, it's been a 10-year grind for you. I mean, what does that mean for you to finally kind of get that shot at the, you know, like I said, the UFC is the pinnacle, man, for you. You know, it's been a 10-year run, like you it. said. I was just waiting for it, you know what I mean? I've been ready, been visualized, and been saying, you know what I'm saying? Every time I picture myself in those moments, I knew my skills and everything. I knew I was ready for them. You know what I mean? Oh, um, I just needed to be in them. You know what I mean? That was the only thing I was missing was the lights, camera. You know what I mean? I was already about the action. You feel me? Hey, much, I definitely, I definitely feel you, man. Like my question, like, so here's my other question. So obviously we've been in quarantine. You've been training and you've been busy because you've been fighting. When you're not fighting, what kind of stuff are you into, man? Are you, you know, are you a big sports guy outside MMA? Yeah. Okay, That's if so, problem, you gotta think. I played football and basketball before. You know what I mean, before fighting was even a thing. You know what I mean, I thought I was gonna be in the NBA or the NFL. That was my dream, and that was you know what I mean. That was what I did and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, how do you yeah. feel? How so playing football and you know, and you said uh, you wanted to play in the NFL, man. Like, do you feel like that helped prepare you at all? You know, for MMA because man, you see a lot of guys I, yeah, coming I'm over a, from I'm football. An athlete. Oh yeah, I was a pure athlete. I'm used to grinding. I'm used to pushing my body to the limit. I'm used to performing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it definitely helped me. It made me a competitor. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, oh, people like, oh, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm not just a, I'm not just a fighter. I'm a competitor. I mean, I like to compete. I thrive in competition. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I, I can respect that, man. 
If so, with uh, all this talk right now, we've been hearing a lot of things about you know NBA is coming back soon, or at least there's in talk with that. With you know them being scared of the co, you know trying to figure out how to make this work with COVID. I don't think they're not scared of the COVID. They're not scared of the COVID thing. The thing is, they don't want to be a distraction. They don't want to be a distraction for the message that needs to be put out, and that's being finally being talked about as far as uh, Black Lives Mattering and uh, Black community the problems plaguing the Black community, and I have plagued the Black community for generations and generations they don't want to I, and i can the spotlight and let me ask you about that man like you being a guy you know on the ufc having the platform you do man like uh what are your thoughts on where we're at in america right now man i mean obviously it's it's a crazy time you know we've been seeing all of what's going on but i mean for a guy like you this gives you a great uh chance on your platform to speak about those things as well i mean uh as far as I'm going, I just want I want what I want what everybody wants. I want change, you know what I mean? I want I want justice whenever injustice is done. You know, I want um I want equal treatment, I want equal opportunities, I want all the things that 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 the that the mantra of America is promised to be, you know. I mean I want I want not to have to fear for my life if I get pulled over by the police. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so, I can totally respect that. Those those are I mean it's the same thing, same thing that everybody wants, and every same same I mean, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Sad part about that, man, is so many people just aren't seeing it for what it is, man. It's just, it's not, you know, it's equality as a whole, man. Nobody should have to walk out of their house and deal with that. But the sad reality is everything you just said is the truth. Yeah. So, you know. I mean, some people, I mean, it's hard, to, it's, hard to, it's hard to believe in something when you don't, I mean, when you don't experience it or you don't see it. That's like me saying, like, man, dog. I did a two fairy rob me, man. She pulled, she came in and pulled my teeth out her damn self. You know what I'm saying? Even if it really happened, people ain't saying who gonna believe it. Exactly. It and never I mean, happened to them. It never happened to them. So how would they, how would they believe that? You know what I mean, why would they believe that to be true? You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's like just like when somebody's like, Oh, I saw a ghost, or I heard a spirit or something like that. You know what I mean? Even if you might believe that person still like, yeah, you take it with a grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? Just for the simple fact of it is you've never experienced it before. You've never seen it before. You know what I'm saying? Totally. It's like, for me, like, to me, and then also, like, another way I, I can I can also kind of describe it is, like, you remember uh, you remember that movie, The Santa Claus? With yep. Sam Allen? You remember, yes, whenever, remember whenever his son was talking to his stepdad? And he yep. was talking about, like, oh, Santa Claus, how, how he was trying to convince him that Santa Claus, uh, he was, like, Santa Claus is not real and he don't believe and stuff. He's like, I've never seen Santa Claus. Have you? You know what I'm saying? That little boy trying to explain to him that it was real and everything, that's about the same. That's about the equivalent of that because he had never seen it before. It was His brain couldn't, can't really fathom it because he's never been in that position, had those feelings and things like that. You know what I mean? Hey, that's a, that's a great, you know, that's a great analogy to it because I myself, obviously it don't take a blind man to see that I'm white, but you know, I, uh, I've even gotten to see some of it with my own, my own eyes. And the sad part of it is, man, like everybody can see what's going on and they don't want to see it for what it is, whether they want to believe it for whatever it is or believe, you know, what they want, man. It's just a sad thing that things can't be seen not for, oh, well, I believe this or I believe that. Right is right and wrong is wrong, period. Right. And equal should be equal. Don't matter whether you're white, black, blue, purple, brown, green, whatever. It shouldn't be that way, but unfortunately, it's not. Um, let's see. What You've got uh, – let's see. I don't even know how to say that dude's name, but he has been commenting at you this whole video. Um my next question for you. So our show covers pro wrestling too, man. We've had the likes of Booker T on here. We've had Eric Bischoff. We've had all kinds of big names that you might've seen from the nineties and today. Did you ever grow up watching pro wrestling at all? Yeah. I used to watch it back when I was younger. Okay. Uh, was there anybody, anybody in particular that jumps out to you at all? Hey, Booker T was my dog, bro. What you mean? Hey man. Five How time. can he not be? Five bro? time. Five time. Yeah. Bro. I remember it all. I remember that. Rock. What about the supermarket fight, bro? <laughs> the supermarket fight between him and Stone Cold, dude. <laughs> I don't even remember. That, that was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen as far as Booker T's career goes. But yeah, man, he you know what's funny, man? I don't know if you've gotten to uh run into him at all at any of your fights. When we interviewed him, we talked to him more about MMA than we talked to him about wrestling because now he's covering boxing fights and all that stuff for ESPN as well. 
So it, it's wild, man. Like you wouldn't think, you know, talking to a guy like that, that's what you're getting. <laughs> so my, you know, everybody always has got the basic question, you know, like if you could fight anybody, who would it be? Or what were you going to say? Your, your face, your screen, your video is frozen. Mine still See, on my, on my screen, yours froze. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It froze up on me. Um, but yeah, man, you know, everybody's got like the stereotypical, um, you know, the question of like, what got you into MMA, all that kind of stuff. You know, you were a natural athlete, you know, like what, what do you remember like a specific fight or anything that, you know, brought you to MMA or like stuck out and was like, yo, that's what got you to switch from the other sports you were playing to come to MMA. Nah, what it was, man, it wasn't even so much just something that I saw. It was just the reality of what the situation was. I wasn't highly scouted coming out of high school. I mean, I didn't do – I didn't – I wasn't on great teams. I didn't get to do all the things that I wanted to do as a player in high school, which didn't translate to me getting scouted or getting the eyes that I wanted. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, I don't know. I was just thinking about what I was going to do. What was the best decision, the best move for me? You know what I mean? And I got into a lot of fights, so – <laughs> if I'm fighting, I might as well get paid for it. Um, I watched the Anderson Silva fight and the Forrest Griffin fight. Uh, that kind of that kind of pushed me into it already. I want to check this out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a, you know that's a common story that we've gotten from a lot of guys that come on. You know, like either you were you know a great athlete coming in, and you know this is just something you fell upon, or maybe you were somebody you know who got in a bunch of fights. You know, growing up. For me, you know, obviously. I'm not on any level like you. I got to do a little bit of boxing. I got a purple belt myself. For me, I grew up with cerebral palsy. So it's crazy how MMA in a sport like that, which people look at to be so brutal, man. Like you can, you know, you can self-defense and all that kind of stuff, man. The stuff that it can do for you just health-wise is insane. Um, so did you get the, did you watch uh, the fights that we just had last weekend with uh, Calvillo and uh, Jessica I? Yeah, I saw it. So, do you think that the do you think that the conditions that we're having right now with like you know the whole pandemic thing, you know, we had a bunch of people miss weight on that card and things like that. Do you think that these you know conditions are making it harder on people to make weight? I oh, mean, it's I mean, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, it is a little bit harder even for me. I made weight on my fight, but I mean, I usually I'm usually on weight a little bit way sooner than I was. So, yeah, I can understand that, but shit, it's your job. It's part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, whenever you sign a contract, you knew how much you weighed. You knew, you knew what you, you knew what was expected of you. So, you know what I'm saying? So, if it was going to be too hard for you, it was going to affect your performance, or you couldn't do it, you, know, you shouldn't have fucking said that you could. So, off of that, you know, the reason I ask, man, is like I say, I mean, this is something that no one's ever really, you know, experienced before so it's obviously new territory for everybody but uh you know after the fight you know i was checking out the ufc uh post-fight press conference and things of that nature and they were talking about uh that cynthia calvillo said that she had thought that jessica eyes pulling the towel trick you know for somebody being you know at the number one contender spot like she was man like what do you think like what are your thoughts on that with somebody saying that they're pulling the towel trick and like do you would that change anything if you were in those shoes? You know, if somebody you know missed uh, weight, or is it business as usual? That fact, the fact that she's looking for more, she's looking for more praise and more shit on the internet at that point. I ain't gonna say because I don't know her, but yeah. but to me, to me, that seems like somebody that's looking for more praise and more. I mean, extra a little bit of extra sauce on that on that on that uh, on that meat boss up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, trying to boast a little bit, huh? Like, oh, she was overweight too. So what? Shit, I'd have fought. I fought somebody before the fight, right before I got signed on the contender series. I weighed 208, and that dude weighed 224. You know what I mean? It's what it is, bro. Either you're going to bang or you're not. I was going to say, so for you, is that a thing where you just think that it comes down to whether you want it or not? Like, especially in a situation like that with the contender series. I mean, and can't be an advantage. Don't get me wrong. Being heavier can be. We talking like two, three fucking pounds, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it wasn't a ton. I don't care. I don't if I'm a better fighter than you, to be honest with you, 10, 10, 15 pounds ain't gonna make a difference. Hey, I can I can respect that. And that was my next question, you know, especially like you know, you hear people say a lot when it's the smaller weight classes that those would be the ones where, you know, 
somebody, you know, two or three pounds can make a big difference. But ultimately, man, if you're, if you're prepared and ready to go, man, you know, I mean, you would think that that would be not as big of a deal. Exactly. Why do you think most of the champ champs have been smaller weight division? Because it's, it's fucking 10 pounds. That's a good point, man, especially with it's the jumps. Do you think, let me ask you that. With you being at a bigger weight class, it's like 205. You know, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of years with the problems that people have had with weight cuts. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about adding, you know, uh, more weight classes and things. What are your thoughts on that? Shit, I'm with that shit. <laughs> I'm with that shit. I mean, like I say, I mean, I've only competed. I've competed. like this. All right, because here's my thing. All right, so you don't tell me, like, people will look at, it like, oh, Conor McGregor's champ, champ, and all this and that. You will put that on the same level as DC? No. You know what I'm saying? Could you put that on the same level? Sure. 205, 205 to 265, to 265. Everybody in between that. He was the king of all of those. You know what I'm saying? That's a big weight gap. On for the sure. same level as 140, 145, and then 155. Yeah. I mean, and there's only. And, I mean, only there's, that, and then not only that, when he won the 155 pound title, he had just came off of fighting at 170 twice. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you about that. So we got that coming up. You know, they just um, they just mentioned that. You know, they're talking about. Um, you know, DC versus uh, Stipe again. If they run it back, who do you got? I'm going to be honest. The first two fights, I had Stipe. I had a feeling Stipe was going to end up winning the second one. That body shot was, was nice, but I'm going to be honest with you. I got DC for the simple fact of, like, DC was fucking him up in that second fight. I like, agree. He was beating his ass in that second fight. You know what I mean? And then he just, I think he just got too comfortable and confident. So, do you think, do you think that uh, with DC saying that this is his last fight, I mean, that could add a little bit extra fire to it, too. I mean, if you're saying that this is the fight you're going to go out on, nobody wants to go he's, out on the wall. Yeah, yeah, bro. He's he's done, bro. I think he is. I've, I've seen DC. I've met DC this year. You know what I mean? I've seen him a couple, a couple few times and shit. You know what I'm saying? He's He's somebody who's pretty – to me, he seems like somebody who's pretty good at where he's at in life, you know what I mean, set with everything and shit. He just wants that one. He just wants that one back. So let me ask you this. So we've got um, – you're seeing – you've I've seen this a couple times now. We, uh, we mentioned a little bit, you know, that you watched wrestling a little bit as a kid. So now in Bellator, we're seeing a uh, crossover in the heavyweight division. you got – you know, we've seen King Mo do it a little bit. Now you've got uh, Jake Hager that's fighting in Bellator while wrestling for AEW too. What are your thoughts on guys dabbling in both worlds with that? Because you got uh, Frank Mir has even showed himself out at. Uh, I saw him in Chicago when we went and worked uh, Starcast, and I've seen he's done a few things in indie wrestling too. Uh, uh, shit, I don't care about get your money. Just, you know they doing it for bread, bro. WWE make money. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Th- that's something that can't be argued, whether you like it or not. I mean, they, they've been around that long for a reason. Um, so with you fighting at 205, man, and we've been talking about, um, you know, we've talked about, you know, the, maybe the implication of other weight classes and things of that nature. You know, could you, uh, could you ever see yourself kind of like bouncing back and forth right now with, you know, you saying you being so ready to fight? Do you see yourself staying at light heavyweight specifically for a while, or could you see yourself even back bouncing back and forth, you know, between heavyweight and light heavy? Here's what it is. That depends on how I feel. If it's a bigger I actually, fight. I actually, uh, whenever they canceled the London card, they were going to move it to the apex. They called me and I was going to take that fight at heavyweight then. Now, have, I'm – and. Forgive me for not knowing this. Have you had uh, many fights at heavyweight, if any at all? Yeah, I have. Okay, so do you feel like at heavyweight, you know, obviously heavyweights are naturally bigger. You know, do you feel like your uh, do you feel like your athleticism kind of makes up for it in that one, or do you feel any real difference in between the two? I look at it like this. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'll still have a, I'll have a quickness and a speed advantage, but at the same time, bro, it don't matter who who you are. If I hit you, you gonna feel me. 
I respect I respect that, man. I mean, that's that's point blank. No matter, no matter all, he's a heavyweight. He's gonna take shots. Eating shots is eating shots. Punches, punches don't feel good. No matter who the fuck's punching you or who's hitting you. You ever had your little? You ever had a little kid, a little niece or nephew or kid, or maybe son or daughter, just come up and clock your ass? It's a baby. It's a child. That shit still hurt, didn't it? Hey man, it's like the it's like the old adage goes, man. The human a human beings even though we've been fighting since the dawn of time, dude. We weren't you weren't supposed to be getting cracked in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like hey, even like, like even my last fight, you look at that clip of the break. When I dropped him, did it look like I threw that shit hard? Did it look like I threw anything extra on that? Not I mean, we play we sh- shared that clip from our page. To be honest, it looked like you kind of just caught him as it was like separating, but dude dropped like a sack of potatoes. Yeah, I don't take man. I don't take nothing to knock somebody out. Let, so my question with that man is: so we've got you know, like I said, you've got Fight Island coming. You know, you just fought at UFC Apex and things of that nature. Do you think? Uh, what do you think uh, for you? If you could have any any one fight, like I said, you know, I was talking earlier about you know how you got into fights. If you could have any one fight right now, it doesn't got to be current current it could be you know past fighter anything anything of the sort if you could pick any one fight any weight class who would it be like a fan see or me fight somebody go with both you can pick put any uh, fight together you want and who could who would you like to fight you can pick arena anything you want yeah uh fight that i want to see that i feel like i've ever got to see would have been the prime anderson silver versus john jones who do you got in that fight? I don't know. Standing, I got Anderson Silva, but John Jones is a big man. You know what I'm saying? And we seen what we seen what with the wrestling of the Chell Sonnen did. So somebody I have to think, like, you know what I mean? But who knows? I mean You know, I feel like John, I feel like if that fight were to ever happen, I feel like John would want to try to test himself a little bit, but I feel like if he would be done. I think, I think, this test, this test of greatness would be what would be what would cost him. You know what I'm saying? Very brother, well. He's like, oh, I'm the greatest. It's hard when you like, I'm when you walking around, oh, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. And then it's like, all right, well, I don't want to fight this dude here. That don't sound like no great shit. That's true, though. I mean, because, I mean, to me, I just look at it like, look at it this way. If he goes in there and say that fight were to ever happen, he goes in there and says, you know, he's going to stand up with uh, – Anderson, you know, if you go get cracked, you can be as tough as you want. Ain't going to work. I feel like if that fight were to ever happen, he'd throw for a couple minutes and then try to take him down and do just like you said with the Chael Sonnen thing. Now, let me flip that to the other question. You know, what about if you could fight anybody, past, present, pride, wherever you want, who would it be? Where would it be? I mean, that, that question could be answered in different ways. It depends on what my angle is. If we're talking about if we're going for legacy, you know what I mean? Then John, for me, at my weight class, John Jones is considered the greatest of all time. You know what I'm saying? So for legacy, he would be the fight that I would have to, that I would want. You know what I'm saying? For for money, Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> he wants that red <laughs> panty night, son. <laughs> for money, it'd be Conor McGregor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so tell just, me about that, man. Like this dude's like talking about to like experience, like experience or whatever, just to like being an awesome. Somebody, it'd probably be Anderson Silva. Okay. Just because to me, because for me, that's the greatest of all time. You know what I'm saying? Just for the simple fact of, I can't really give John John Jones the greatest of all time tag for the simple fact of he, like, you got pop performance enhancing drugs multiple times. You know what I'm saying? I that answers my question too, man. I was gonna ask you that. Do you feel like how much do you feel like it's uh tainted his you know legacy with that stuff? Yeah, that shit. It did definitely didn't help. It's hard. It's hard. It's, that that'd be like T.J. Dillashaw coming back and winning a fight and like, oh, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest right now, like, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So where does that put him for you now, though? Who T.J. Either or, like, in either situation. Like, if, if John, you know, for John, where does that leave him for you now? I think John is the, is the, is the most talented, is the most talented and, I mean, fighter that we've seen. But 
as far as legacy goes, I'd have to probably, I probably, Anson Silva is still the GOAT for me just because of the shit that I saw him do was just so fucking unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? And he made it look so easy. But also, I take into account the fact of the era that he fought in. You know what I'm saying? It's almost the same thing like the Jordan and LeBron debate. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, Michael Jordan was great. He was phenomenal. But look at who he was. He wasn't being guarded by a Kawhi Leonard or a Kevin Durant or a, you know what I'm saying? That, like that's a very, dude, foot, that's a great six, comparison six, six, because, six, I mean, six, obviously, obviously the game's evolved since then, so that's definitely a great comparison. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like back, but honestly, I feel like back then, like, like you put somebody like me back in that old era and shit, something like, how did it? Those that were champions wouldn't be, wouldn't have been champions. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a great point because I mean, even just with the uh, example you used with, uh, you know, with Jordan, with Jordan and LeBron, I mean, it's just totally different. I mean, the game is different. Even fights are different. I mean, you yeah. see the the level of athleticism that you see today. I mean, there's no way you can even say that it's even matched. You know, back then there were great guys, but it's different. Also, where a lot of people are capitalizing is the mentality still hasn't evolved. You know what I mean? The mentality still has to evolve because because of how it was back then, like, oh, this guy's a wrestler. This guy's a boxer. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and they go in, and this dude go in, he punch the dude in the face, and the dude grab him and take him down. It's like, oh, the wrestlers can't deal with boxing. Bro, it's the age of mixed martial artists, period. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just be like, oh, I'm a boxer. I'm just going to go in and just outbox this dude. That motherfucker might have some kicks. He might have some 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 takedowns or something that can that he can mix in on your ass to, to get to his own hands and then end up outboxing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's just too rounded. It's just too much added into it. Definitely can respect that. So I got to ask, since you brought it up, you know, you brought up, uh, you brought up Conor McGregor being a guy that you'd want for the money fight. Can't blame you because obviously there's no arguing that that guy's brought in probably the most money on his fights as anybody has in recent memory. What are your thoughts on him uh, now, once again, for the third time in the last four years, announcing his retirement? You think it's just another play for money? I mean, I don't know. He feels how he feels personally. I personally, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. All right, I see you, baby. How you doing? Well, totally um, respect hey. it, man. Well, I won't. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally just, can respect that. Yeah, I'm just not, yeah, I'm just, I don't, I don't care, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm a, like, we live in an age where people just create shows, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I just look at it as part of the show. Much respect. I can respect that completely. So we have a question that we usually ask a lot to, uh, you know, a lot of the wrestlers on the show. We called it locker room etiquette. We've had everything from keep your baby mama out the locker room, wash your balls, bring your own wrist tape, all kinds of different stuff. So obviously with you being an MMA guy, you know, I figured I would uh, ask the same question, but switch it up a little bit. For you, you know, on fight day, man, do you have any, like, are there any, like, um, not rituals, but like any pet peeves, any type of like superstitions or anything like that that you have, like a pre-fight ritual, anything like that. I just listen to music, have fun, chill, joke around, sleep. Sleep definitely nights. Got you, got you. So you aren't super. So you're not super. You're not uh super like serious and locked down until it gets to fight time. Then uh, even in the fight, I'm still. I'm happy, but I'm locked in. But I'm happy. Hey, Free I can respect that, man. It makes it, e- it. I would imagine it's got to make it easier for you to know what you want to do and be able to see the, you know, to see your opponent's move coming from you. So, I can respect that. So, like I said, man, I don't want to keep you and uh, you know hold up any more of your time, man. We appreciate you coming on here, and like I said, I'm sure once we get out of here, I'll see you around. Like I said, I'm out at Lights Out and all the different spots around here in Michigan, and hopefully, I mean, once we get out of here. Hopefully we can get uh you know we can uh, do round two in person, man. But um, I just want to thank you for your time, man. Uh, if you got anybody else you want to shout out, give any plugs to anything good like that, man. Throw it out there. Oh yeah, man. I want to give you know always. I shout out my team, Black Lion. Uh, Black Lion is the family team. Coyle Gracie. Uh, shout out to my coaches, Trap Pomeroy, Johnny Gridware. Um, Guys, been waiting for it since day one. Shout out to my family, my mom, my dad, my brothers, um, my kids. You know, just 
everybody that's been hanging with me, sticking with me, uh, a couple of local businesses up here that have rocked with me since the beginning of the pro journey, uh, Wizard Lick Apparel and uh, Next Day Construction. You know, um, just appreciate my people. You know, I got a whole, I got a, got a whole nation behind me. You know, we coming, we hungry, we want that top spot. Hey man, and this and this is just the beginning for you, man. And just like he did, and shooting, shouting them out. Shout out to our sponsors as well, Stransky and Company Realty, man. If you're in the market for a house, check them out. All the links are in the description of this and on our page on Knockouts and Three Counts. Hit them up, admin at StranskyandCompany.com. Hey man, thank you for your time. Like I said, we're definitely gonna have to catch up once we get out of here, man. And best of luck with the next fight. And hey, we're in your corner, brother, man. Thanks for the time. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Man. Well, everybody, that was UFC star Jamal Hill. We appreciate his time. Like I said, stay tuned to the channel, man. You never know who you're going to be seeing here. It could be somebody from the wrestling world. It could be somebody from the MMA world. We're going to be bringing out more prediction videos, all that good stuff. We'll have Kel Dansby, ESPN ringside on with us for our next prediction video. I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank you, Jamal, for your time. And uh, until next time, man, peace.